Hi folks, welcome to the channel. And as you can see, we are finally outside. We've got a little break in the weather, so I thought I'd take advantage of it and show you a bunker video. So we're in the bunker here at the 9th at Chessfield. And as you can see, it's a, it's a revetted bunker. Now obviously it's quite shallow revetted compared to some of the Lynx courses we have around here. But beautifully done. It's actually synthetic. So it looks like grass, but it's actually not real. So I thought I'd show you it. Now, as well as and as lovely that, as that looks, you want to get out of these bunkers first time every time. And I'm going to show you, if you're having trouble or you want to improve your bunker play, think of the four S's. And I'm going to show you the four S's and how they can help you. And at the very end of this video, I'm going to show you actually the worst fault I see with people who um, struggle to get out of bunkers. So let me show you. So to start with, a bunker is complete, a bunker swing and a bunker action is completely different to your normal swing. So do not take your full swing and all your normal golf swing to a bunker shop. Right, the four S's. The first one, stance. Nice and wide, you can see the flag there. Our feet are gonna be slightly left of that. We don't wanna to go too much and we here we've got to open our stance. We're gonna say just very minimally but our stance, as you can see from the front view, is quite wide and our hands are low. So that's the first S. Stance quite wide, uh, just a little left, but make sure we get our hands low. We don't want our hands up here. What that's going to help is our second S, is steep. Now what steep means is we've got to pick our club up as steeply as we can. So from the behind view, you can see it's quite steep here. It's actually pointing straight down. What we don't want in a bunker, and any short game, in fact, is our club going round. So there's no arc in a chipping action. It's just steep. And obviously we can carry on that way. So what I would say there is steepness of our backswing is creating natural length. If we didn't have any steepness and no wrist angle, we wouldn't have any natural length and we'd have to do the work and shove it ourselves. So having a wrist angle, a very hingy, wristy backswing, remember you don't have to turn doing this, and that makes us stay nice and centered over the ball, but we're hinging our wrists as quickly as we can away from the ball. That gives us that natural length. So the second S is steepness. We've got steepness on the way back. We've got natural steepness on the way down. While I was chatting, let me just try and show you one. So it's nice, it's very short bunker shot this, but you can see the actual length I had there. Third S is speed. Speed's gonna be your friend. What you don't wanna do is decel and get a bit scared of it, especially if it's a longer bunker shot. But if you've got a bit of um, steepness and a bit of hinge on the way back, the club head will do the work for you. You're generating the momentum because the backswing is a little longer. So you can see there, got that little scoopy. You can see a bit of check. That hinge of those wrists will give you the natural speed. But anyway, what you need to do is focus on that kind of real pop down there. So stance, make sure you have your hands low. That's gonna help with the pickup. Little hinge and then speed down at the bottom. You can see, for even for a short little bunker shot, got that a little heavy, my swing is still quite long. The fourth S, and the final one, so we've got stance, steepness, speed, and this is straight, so I kind of mentioned it very slightly at the very start here, is a, a bunker shot is not rounded at all, so there's no arc in a bunker shot. You want the bunker shot to be very straight. Now there's gonna be obviously some natural inside, but you don't want this club going behind you at all because you're gonna lose the steepness. So the fourth S is straight. Our club wants to be going pretty much straight up and down. To help with that, we don't wanna to be too far away. In our stance, that keeps our hands low. If you have your hands low, you can get your club going back straight here. So you can see from the front view, I'm not turning off the ball at all. I'm keeping my weight pretty centered. There's obviously a natural 10% weight going onto my left side, but there's no physical movement and turn over to my right side like a golf swing would be. So remember, we don't take our full swing 
to a bunker shot, especially a green side bunker shot. Obviously a fairway bunker shot it would be, but a green side bunker shot around here, we do not take our um, a normal swing to it. So the fourth S is straight, keeping the club very up and down and not around. One more and I'm going to show you the biggest fault that I see with people who struggle out of a bunker. One more, got the face kind of open so the stance is open, only a little as you can see. Everything's parallel to that, the club's open a little bit. I've got a short little shot here so I'm going to give it a little bit of an open face but nothing too major, remember you don't want to open it too much. Hands low, I'm going to pick it up as much as I can. And you can see I'm kind of, there's a natural pop there because I've got a bit of wrist. So the wristier, the wrist, uh, wristier the action, the better I think in a bunker shot. Even top players actually are very kind of wristy in their natural bunker shot. Remember there's loads of different actions out there. You see loads of different bunker shots, little low spinny ones, very soft landing ones, but our majority of our bunker shots want to be the standard type of shot here. Remember length is your friend here. Just like a chipping action, you don't want a short backswing because you're going to have to generate the, the, the hit and that's a really bad thing for technique. Having a, a bunker swing or a short game swing that's short to long is always going to cause problems by lifting up. Having a long backswing, longer, longer they actually the better. So make sure the club, you can see there how long my swing was and the ball's only just gone past the flag, which is only 10 yards away, 30 feet away. Okay, so let's go on to the last kind of, if, if any of that is causing you some problems, this is the, this is the main one I see that people who have long-term problems with their bunker, bunker play. As you can see, I'm kind of left slightly. What people do is this. Basically, I'm going to show you actually rather than say what I did. So, up. You can actually see, I might slow that down just for the visuals, but I will go through it with you. Is I'm aiming slightly left but my instinct's telling me the flag's over to my right slightly. So I picked it up like a normal swing, but then I went out to where the flag is. And what I actually did, I just hit an inside shank. Well, the ball went out, but I actually hit an inside shank. So what that actually means is going back to the straight S, is you need this club to go down and then not away from you. Your hands don't like, especially if you're stuffing, suffering from an over the top. What you don't want to do is feel like, right, okay, my full swing, I need these arm, my arms to be a bit more away from me. What you don't want to do that in a bunker shot. You want to keep your, your hands going up and down, not around. So you want to be parallel to these lines all the time. So the club does not want to go ever outside that outside line. So let me draw, let me draw that hopefully a little bit more prominently so you can see it from the behind view. You can see the parallel lines there, it's very slightly. Now what you don't want to do is have the club going outside that line. You want to be keeping it as straight down that line as much as you can, even if it's slightly inside that line. But the backswing stays out, the follow through can come in a little bit, out to in. That was the best one so far. Remember you don't want the hands and arms going away from you. So if you're hitting that little scully one, that's the one you've got to watch for. That's the actual sequence. The club wants to be going across your left foot, obviously for right-handers. So up and across instead of up and away from you. Right, so let's try a couple more, see if we can hold one. Now, I said there's going to be one final tip, which was that. The one thing that I would like you to introduce into your bunker play if you're struggling, even if you're not struggling, I'd like you to introduce the only time we can really let this club pass us and we actually kind of, you can see what I'm doing with my wrist there, I'm kind of scooping, show you from the front view. 
So in a chipping action, you're kind of holding on a little bit. You're allowing the club to go a little bit. But in a bunker play, we don't. We want this club to be passing our hands as quick as possible. Now that's exaggerated. You don't hold on to the hand handle with a chipping uh, bunker play. You do for a pitch and chip shot. But for a bunker shot, you let this club pass your hands. Why? It's because we want this bounce of the club. We've all known about the bounce on the bottom of the club here. You don't do that if you hold on to it because you're going to dig the leading edge in. What you want to do is get this club going past you as quick as possible. But to do that, you've got to have the steepness and the speed as well to bounce that club off the ground. If you haven't got the steepness and you try and get the club back to it, you're probably going to thin it. Or the club's going to hit way back here. So if the club's hitting way back behind the ball, firstly, watch your stance nice and wide, low hands, really pick that club up as steep as you can. Then you can got natural down, and then you're going to fire the club face past your hands to introduce that bounce. Let me show you a couple. Nice and wide, really steep in my hands, pick it up. And you can see how I'm finishing. I'm finishing with my hands, my club going past my hands there. I'm not holding on. That's a massive secret, folks, by the way. Don't be afraid to kind of flick it. Really great, and it's really gonna introduce the bounce on the club. If your ball is plugged, and we go into more kind of detailed bunker shots in the future, don't do this, because you obviously want to drive that leading edge in. But if the ball's lying normally like it is, left and left, which means slightly left stance, open club face, pick her up and then fire. You can see how much speed there was down there and that's the one that's gone the shortest because I really got that club under there, really focused on getting that club under the ball. Last one, oh, I need to try and hold one now, pressure's on. Okay, it's a little bit longer. Remember, we don't hit it harder, we just swing it longer, build that momentum up. Slightly open, slightly open stance because we've got a kind of a downhill halfway to the, the hole. Really pick her up, really feeling like these thumbs are pointing to the sky and I'm going to fire this club past my hands. Nice and still, I'm not, no weight transference, keeping my head still. Pick her up, hit that a little heavy actually, worked out okay. So remember the four S's, really important, the four S's. We've got stance, steepness, we've got speed, and we've got keeping the club straight. It doesn't go out in front of us, and especially that one. We never want the club to, hands to go away from us. We want to keep everything nice and tight, up and down and across. And remember, we are allowing, from the front side there, we are allowing this club to fire down and past our hands. Okay, I hope that helps. Hope that's given you a little insight into trying to be a consistent bunker player because getting into a bunker, what you want to do first of all is get this bunker, get this ball out first time. You do not want to be in there taking three or four. It's going to be a real confidence uh, drainer because, and what that will do, it will really upset and take away the confidence of your approach play because if you've got bunkers around the green, you're going to be a little bit nervy into your approach play as well. But if you've got a bunker um, play that's reliable, it doesn't have to be perfect straight away, you just want the ball to come out, you've got a kind of a reliable, consistent bunker play that you can get the ball out first time, it's going to make your approach play much more or less stressful. And then that'll improve your golf. So having this area of your golf quite tight will really be a benefit to your golf and your scoring. If anyone would like any comments and put any comments down to um, tell me how this video went or how your bunker play improved, hopefully after seeing this, I'd love to hear from you. We've got Trev here, he's actually in the buggy over there sitting and um, being a good boy. So from Trev and myself, I'll hopefully, hopefully see you outside next time. If not, I'll see you in the academy and please let me know if you, uh, if you need anything specific for me to talk about. Okay, for the next time, I'll see you soon. Cheerio.